In this tutorial I'm going to show some basic tips for using V-Ray lighting and V-Ray cameras. And to do that I'm going to use this basic scene that I've set up here. And throughout the process you'll see a few tricks that I use to make nicer images. I have these uh, six spheres here that just have a chrome material on them. I put a V-Ray plane with a medium gray material on it as my ground plane. Um, I've set up a basic V-Ray camera here. Um, we're going to uh, mess around with some of the depth of, depth of field and motion blur to kind of show some different ways to enhance our images. And then I'm going to go through the basic settings of a V-Ray light and show you what those different things do so you can know exactly how to use them properly to get the desired effects. Uh, but first of all, let me show you how I set up a little more about how I set up this scene here. Um, I created a V-Ray HDRI, which you can do quite easily by um, going to any map slot, clicking on V-Ray HDRI, um, then dr I like to drag that, drag that map slot out into its own material slot here. Um, then browse for your HDRI, which there's plenty of free ones available online. Uh, make it into a spherical environment, so it'll look like this. Um, and then what I like to do is drag that right into my um, my GI environment skylight override. Make sure it's turned on. So now there's no color being emitted from this, the skylight. Uh, my environment setting is, this can be gone, is, uh, the background is just going to show up black. The scene will be lit by this HDRI and then I want it also to, instead of reflecting the black environment, I want to reflect this HDRI so I'll put that in this slot as well. Instance it, make sure it's checked. Now my reflection instead of, instead of uh, these chrome balls reflecting a black background, they will reflect this V-Ray HDRI scene, which will add much more interest. So that's a basic way to set up a, a, a little scene with some nice lighting going on. Um, let's close the render panel, and then we will create a simple V-Ray light by going to Create, Tab, Lights, V-Ray, and make a big plain light going over all these spheres. We'll raise it up a little bit. Make sure it's not turned up too high. Um, I'll make it invisible for now. Multiplier is at 5, that's fine. Okay, now in this camera I will... I like to turn off exposure. I turn off vignetting as well. Um, that way, instead of adjusting both my camera and my lights to try and get the right exposure, I leave the exposure as fixed by turning it off, and I just adjust my lights. You can use you can use both to try and fine tune it, but taking one variable out makes it a little simpler. Um, so now we just have to worry about the intensity of our lights. Um, and we set this at five. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, I changed my camera around a little bit and adjusted some render settings, and this is basically what we're getting. You can see that big light is reflecting in all my chrome balls here, and so is my HDRI and my ground plane. Um, so, I guess if that's what you wanted, that'd be great. Um, I'm going to make some adjustments to show you some other settings. Obviously, I'm going to be keeping the render settings pretty low, so they're not going to be the highest quality, but it'll save us some time. So, if we wanted that to not show up as a reflection in the ball, we could go into the light, go to Modify, and hit this Effect Reflections button, which is pretty self-explanatory. Now if we go into... Oh, I wanted to use that originally anyway. Okay. Now if we render a little region of one of these balls, we'll see that that light is uh, it's going to be gone. 
Okay, so the light is no longer there in the reflection now, obviously. Gonna change my camera view a bit here to show some other settings of this thing. Um, I think cast shadows, double sided, invisible, uh, those are all um, self explanatory. Um, ignore light normals, what that does is makes it so instead of the light is just going in the direction of this arrow, it's actually going straight out from from this plane in all directions. Um, except not in the back direction unless you have double sided on. So let me show you an example of that. We uh, it was it was on already, so it was giving out a nice soft um, area light effect. If we turn it off, it will change slightly, especially if we make the if we make this light a lot smaller. You'll see now when I render that this the light is coming straight down and not out in all directions. So that's it with the uh, with ignore light normals unchecked. If we choose to ignore the light normals, it will look like this. Okay, so the distinction isn't uh, very obvious here, but if I tr this right side I rendered with the ignore light normals checked, and the left is with it unchecked. If I take away that red line, you'll see that uh, these areas are getting a lot more light with it unchecked, or with it checked, because the light is, is uh, spreading out further from that light. And that's all that does. And you'll want it different depending on what kind of uh, situation you're trying to light. No decay is pretty simple, uh, self-explanatory. Um, these are self-explanatory effect reflections I showed you. Um, I think that's that's about what there is to know on the lights. Um, let's look at some of the camera settings and, and try to get a nicer looking image now. Okay, in our camera settings, if we go right click on this plus mark and select camera and then go into modify, I'm going to set it up so that look at it from the top view. We're going to specify our focus and set up some uh, depth of field effects. So if you go to specify focus and adjust this, it will show you the planes, uh, it will show you the uh, the area that will be in focus on your camera. So there's a light blue frame uh, plane here and a light blue plane here. Between those two is what's going to be in focus. The dark blue is what's going to be in the most crisp focus. So we want it to kind of land right on our chrome balls there. Um, and then, like with a physical camera, if you adjust the F number, that will uh, expand the area that will be in focus. So let's render something like that. with, And what you need to do is check depth of field. Um, go to that camera. We'll hit render and see how the blurred effects come out. Okay, as you can see, the blurring is not very obvious here. These balls are more crisp than these balls. But at this resolu resolution, you can hardly even tell, so we're going to bump it up a little bit more, and I'll show you how. Um, we close this, go to top view, select this camera. What we need to do is put our F number down much lower. That's that's uh, kind of ridiculously low um, if you were talking about a real world camera. But let's just focus right on that one ball there and see what happens. Okay, now you can see with that overly exaggerated. Uh, low f not low f number. You we can get some major uh, blurring going on here, and all this depends on how your camera set up, how close it is to the camera, how wide angle your camera is, what your f number is. All those kind of settings help determine what your blurring is going to be. But it's it's uh, pretty much true to life as far as a physical camera goes. So you can see there's a nice depth of field going on where these. And if I had a higher resolution, nicer rendering, you get a nice blurred effect going on back there. And this is perfectly crisp.
Okay, now we're going to work on a little bit of motion blur with that camera. For that, I uh, did a simple animation of this ball rolling across the scene. Um, as the ball gets right here, I want to be totally focused on it. So I'll go to the camera, uh, adjust my focal distance to be right on that sphere. But we're going to now sample motion blur as well, right here. Um, now let's, <coughs> you can see that ball is going to be rolling through the scene. So let's pause it right about there, that's fine. Um, now here we turned off exposure so our shutter speed isn't affecting our exposure but it will still affect our motion blur. So just like with a regular camera if you have a slow shutter speed that ball is going to blur a lot. So if we put this at like 10 We'll see what we get here. Okay, there's what we get. That that third ball in is uh, just streaking straight across the scene. It's obviously not a very clean blur. You can adjust that in the subdivisions um, and in your render settings. But it is giving us the effect we want. Um, now, depending on how fast you've animated that and what your shutter speed is, that's how much blur you're going to get. Um, for me, that's a little bit too much blur, so we'll adjust this um, to make it a little faster shutter speed. Put it at 30, and kind of see what we get here. Okay, there's just a tiny bit of blur going on in that ball. Um, but you can see now, here's the depth of field going on. The sharpest focus is right where that blurred ball is going by. And you can also see the motion blur as that ball is uh, rolling past the others. So that's how you use that function in the V-Ray cameras. And it's very nice because it's all built in and based on physical cameras. One last thing before we go. I'll show you how to use a V-Ray daylight system. Very simple. Create panel, lights, V-Ray sun. Um, would you like to automatically add a V-Ray Sky Environment Map? Yes. Now, in this slot here, there's a V-Ray Sky, and it's using maps, so that will be our new background. Even though our HDRI is still overriding it, now you'll see that sky in the background. So it's not lighting our scene, but it is our background. Um, the sun... The sun will change color and intensity depending on its angle. If you're putting it like straight up, that's like noonday. If you're putting it way down, it's like a sunset or a sunrise. Um, so let's just put it about right there, something near dusk maybe. Um, and it's set up to be physically accurate in its intensity. So if you leave it at one intensity multiplier, that is meant to be used with a physical camera with the exposure turned on because that exposure will make it much um, darker I guess you could say. Since we have our exposure turned off we have to manually turn down the sun. Um, we just kind of fake it lower and usually put it around 0.05 or so. Um, but the point is if you took this sun and put a camera in with that exposure on, on the default settings the exposure of your scene would be about right. But because we turned off the exposure of that camera, we need to manually turn down our sun. Because it's extremely bright, just like the sun actually is. So let's just uh, do a quick render and see how that comes out. Okay, there's a basic uh, rendering with the V-Ray sun set up. You can see you have a nice colored sky. And, li and like I said, it's a little bit dusky right there because we put our sun at a lower angle. Um, if we put it at a higher angle, like so, it will give us a completely different look. Probably be too bright. Let's give it a try. Okay, that's more like a noonday sun. It's obviously too bright for this scene, but we could turn down our intensity multiplier if we wanted. Um, all I'm going to do is put it back to where it was. Let me show you that what that will look like if we go into our render settings and turn off that HDRI that we've got. 
Now, instead of the HDRI lighting our scene, the V-Ray Sky right here in this slot will be our background and also light our scene. And there's nothing overriding it anymore. So with that, we will get this. Okay, as you can see, that um, turns our scene a lot more blue because now the sky is is all around us and emitting kind of a, a, a bluish light. Our shadows are much more blue. Um, you no longer see the HDRI in the in the spheres. You see where the sun is located over here in the sky. It's a very bright spot. So this is a very easy, simple, quick way to get um, quite accurate looking uh, outside environments. So hopefully that shows you a little bit about how to, different ways to use the V-Ray sun, V-Ray lights, and V-Ray cameras all together to make realistic looking scenes.